like I said, the portfolio doesn't have to be super in-depth because you will be able to speak to the judges about everything that you've done. So this kind of brings us into the next portion of our video, which is about pit design and judging as a whole. So like everyone knows, you get time to go and speak to the judges in a room and then they will come to your pit um, to speak to you about your robot even further if they think that you qualify for any awards. So um, every team is allotted a 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot space inside of the competition area. Of course, this may vary based on where your competition is, but um, it's 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 is standard for the pits. And so basically this is an area that you're able to do whatever you want. So typically this table is get, so this area has um, a table and two chairs and you're free to bring whatever you else you want as long as you don't exceed your 10 by 10 by 10 space. This area needs to serve a lot of functions. It needs to be able to have it be a place where you can work on your robot in between matches, a place where you can talk to other teams, but also a place where you can talk to judges because they will come and visit you while you're in your pit. So one thing that our team tries to do is use the pit to our advantage. Because we're given the space and we're free to decorate it or use it however we want to, we use it as a way to portray information to the judges that they might not necessarily get by just reading our portfolio. The portfolio and our pit go hand in hand because our portfolio has a lot of information in it, but in the, at the end of the day, it's only 15 pages long and some things we have a lot more to say about. So that's why I will keep on saying it over and over again, keep your portfolio concise because that way the judges will come and ask you questions and these questions can be answered in your pit. Okay, so this is what our pit design looks like. It seems like a lot and it is a lot, but this is what works for our team. Of course, what works for our team isn't what works for your team and what we have access to might not be what every other, other team has access to. So it's just the ideas behind it rather than the actual physical um, representation itself. So this is what our pit design looks like. Um, we, it's made up of two triangles that rotate and we're able to display information on, on each side um, about different aspects of our team. So this triangle is kind of our outreach um, triangle and strategy triangle. So it includes things that you may have already seen in the portfolio, such as our team information, the way that our team is split up, our sustainability, agile development system and all that, as well as some of our outreach um, and experts. One thing that we really try to prioritize when it comes to our um, pit design is physical iterations. And I'll get more into that when we go over to the design side. But when it comes to outreach, there isn't a lot of physical iterations that we can show. It's not like we build an outreach. So we don't really um, utilize a lot of that when it comes to the um, outreach aspect of our pit design. That's why a lot of this looks like it's copied and pasted from the portfolio because it is copied and pasted from the portfolio, but this is less to give the judges new information and more to assist our team members as they teach the judges about things in the pits. For example, if a team member does not have a lot of experience with outreach, they can still confidently go over to a judge and talk about any of these outreach events because they each have a description next to them. And the judge can even teach themselves about things by reading um, what they can visually see on this board. When it comes to our pit design, we kind of focus on two things, being able to be read by other people to help them learn about it, but also being able to be used by our team to help us at, throughout our judging process. This allows our team members, even if you might get a little bit nervous whenever you're presenting to a judge, you will always have something to point at and to look at and to bring you back in when it, whenever you're being asked questions about something that you might not have a lot of experience with. One thing that we do try to do is include more information than what was in our portfolio because this is a much larger space than the 15 pages that we're used to. So for example, in our expert section, we included three more experts to give a little bit more of a well-rounded view of all the experts that we've met with this season. These experts are not included in the portfolio, but they are important to us still, so that's why we wouldn't include them here. Now, this is our other triangle, which includes design strategy, programming, and also all of our design. So this is where really physical iterations come into play. When it comes to your portfolio, you can't physically touch any of the images that you see inside of the book because, you know, it's, it's a 2D space. But whenever you're in a 3D space, like your pit, you have the opportunity to showcase the things that you've made with real life iterations. So 
That's something that we really try to do when it comes to our pit design. One awesome example of us using physical iterations to show um, our iterative process is in our odometry section. We have our first design here, and then our most current design here. We also try to make sure that these physical iterations are accessible for everyone who's trying to look at them. So we attach ours with Velcro, and that's what works for us. This allows the judges to be able to not only see what they look like, but feel it and be able to examine it from all sides to really comprehend what the design is. We utilize this idea of um, physical iterations even more on the next side. Um, our team really takes a lot of pride in the, the fact that we not only create and print and fabricate our own materials and designs, but also that we change them throughout the process. When it comes to pit design, we kind of try to have a balance between aesthetics and information. As you can see here, some of the stuff is very interesting to look at, like our poles and like the, um, the lights that we oftentimes have going on the sides of our um, pit triangles. However, it's also very informative. The information here is very in-depth. The people who are um, observing the pit will be drawn in by the interesting pole and aesthetic aspects of our pit but then they will be able to stay and learn about our um, robot whenever they come to the pit itself. Overall, this has really helped us throughout our judging journey. Whenever the judges come to the pits, it can be a really nerve wracking experience and something where you have a lot to say, but don't really know how to say it. So having these um, informative aspects of our pit has really helped us because we can really talk to the judges in depth about what we know. And it's kind of like a living portfolio, something that you can feel and touch and be able to look at and just be able to learn more overall. And so I really recommend that your team um, try something out like this and explores the idea of um, doing more than just speaking when it comes to pit judging. Like I said before, your pit design does not have to be as fancy or extravagant as ours is. We put a lot of effort into ours, but for someone who's just starting out, I mean, in the past, we just had a poster board or a trifold that had some pictures and um, iterations on it. Any little thing that you can do to make your judging experience better is a step in the right direction. So don't let this intimidate you, but let it encourage you to see that you can start somewhere small, like a um, poster board, and work your way up towards something that's a little bit more complex. Any step that you take is a step in the right direction, like I just said. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video is helpful for you. If you have any questions or you have, want to share anything that you do with your portfolio, feel free to leave a comment. And don't forget to check out our portfolio on our website. Thank you.